Uh, we're going to get on to Josh McGuinness Ruiz. Hopefully, we will chat to yourself or Jason after a big win later on in the week. But we do want to chat uh, about Joshua Ruiz 2.0 at this point. Almost the difficult second album from Anthony Ruiz go going into uh, this weekend. Th this is a situation where he's obviously been held up now as one of overnight one of the most famous boxers in the world. There's talks and there is signs of a physique change. Are you worried at all about his mindset going into this, about trying to follow this up uh, with, when the stakes are a little bit higher? I th like, you, that's a good analogy, the second album, you know? Maybe he's used all these, these hits on the first one and now the record label is looking for a big, <laughs> for a big hit on the second one. But, like, um, the, like the, the question of his mentality, he was very hungry with the first one because he was un unknown and didn't have any financial security. And when you give those things to a fighter, um, it can be, it can, it can excel you and raise you up and make you better. Or it can have the opposite effect where you start to believe the hype. Um, you think the first fight was easy. You don't give your opponent much credit as in Joshua. And you start to relax a little bit because, you know, Marvin Hagler said it's hard to get up and run at 5 a.m. when you're wearing silk pajamas. You know, it's, it's, uh, that's, 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 that, but he strikes me as a guy who, he doesn't kind of take anything, he takes it all in his stride, isn't he? He's very like, you know, he doesn't seem to, the weight of the situation doesn't seem to affect him. He just seems pretty, pretty happy fella. And maybe, and that's probably the right approach to have. Um, but, it's just a, just a, it's an intriguing fight. It's a really really interesting interesting fight, and obviously it's the biggest fight of the year, probably in the long uh, in a long long time. In the heavyweight division, probably a big, obviously we had Wilder and Fury last year, but this one involves like a lot of the belts all except one. So it's probably I don't know Tyson and Lewis back in back in whenever that was 05, 04, That was like the last hey, in terms of global attention for a fight, a heavyweight fight. This is it's probably biggest since that, uh, and it's in terms of it being a contest, it's very intriguing too because we all know what happened the first time around. Um, but who can make the adjustment? Can Joshua change? Can he fight a different fight? Will he be able to hold his nerve, um, or will we just do the same thing? You know, it's 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 an intriguing, intriguing style of match of styles. It, like it is, it's very, very intriguing stylistically. But even just to go back to that weight point, it seems that they both change a little bit. Like uh, according to Eddie Hearn, there is a good bit of weight shed from Anthony Joshua at this point. Like I know Hearn is obviously there to, to big up a fight always, but he said he was seventeen stone ten in the first fight, but he's much, much lighter now. I think he'll weigh in around seventeen stone two pounds. He's not been pumping weights. He's been watching his diet, eating really clean. This camp has been fifteen or sixteen weeks, not ten or eleven as normal he's been sparring 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 i would say andy that you know diet and eating really clean and sparring 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 should probably be part of your camp regardless of the stakes of a fight yeah but it's <clears throat> sometimes you know there's so much emphasis put on the other the other aspects of, of boxing that, and they can take take place and true um in terms of jumping and then they've said he's ta taken down his he's kind of Back to an old school way of training, um, and I think that would be very good for him because he hasn't got a lot of experience. You forget he's still learning. He's still like started boxing late, won the won the Olympic heavyweight title. Really, when I don't know, like the Cuban probably beat him in the final. The, the finals were in London, the Olympics were in London, and they probably gave him the decision. And then he was propelled in his 17th fight. He fought for a world title. Guys are getting an education, and most mm. of them don't fight until like fight for world title until like the 27th fight, 26th fight. He fought for world title in his 17th fight. Education in, in terms of a boxer has been stunted. Um, and that was, was, was apparent outside. You could see that, that he hadn't, hasn't got those instincts that you, that are embedded and, and ingrained in you at, from learn, that you learn from a young age um, when you're boxing all the time. I've had like, there's been a, there's a big, not some sort of controversy from people who don't know, but when Robin Crack said, I knew my fighter was concussed in the corner when he talked about Joshua, and there was some, you know, that was a quote that went around the world, like boxing, fight, a fighter fighting concussed. But look, I've had fights like that myself where I've been knocked down, and it's not until four or five rounds later where you realize you're actually in a fight. But 
somehow you've gotten through the previous five rounds because you have instincts built up. And he doesn't have those instincts, Joshua. So I think him going back to a training camp where he's sparring a lot, and it can only be good for him. It can only be good. And like he's never given a reason why he underperformed or why he, or an excuse. He's never. But I listened to an interview to him, with him today, and he came as close as he ever did to giving a reason. And you said that, and it's quite valid that he was preparing for another guy, Joel Miller who failed a drug test, I think, three weeks before the release fight. So they had to find a replacement. And Miller is a big guy, 6'5", big, huge guy. And then he comes down to fight Ruiz, who's 6'2", maybe 6'1", and different, completely, completely different style. And so there was a change in sparring partners in terms of the height and statue and their styles. And he said, he said, he didn't say it outright, but I could tell by the words without saying it, that he had had a hard time adjusting to Ruiz's style in the ring because it wasn't what he was seeing every day in training, preparing for Miller. So this time he would have brought in sparring partners, and now he brought in Derek Chisora and another <coughs> other, other high quality sparring partners. And it will be that will be a good thing for him. That will like definitely be benefits to that. He looks smaller, he looks lighter, and he looks to me like a fella who's going to jab, jab, and box his way to a. To who that's it, that'll be his game plan. Not to get involved, not to trade, not to hook with Ruiz, but to throw a jab. And see, Ruiz has this ability, and you, if you watch the first fight, um, where he'll pick shots, where he'll walk Joshua down, and he'll he'll take the he'll take Joshua's punches away from him by picking them with his hands, and almost like he's doing pads and blocking them on his forearms. And then when he can get use that to get get into range, and then he'll throw his rapid fire hooks where Joshua can use his jab this time. Instead of committing to the jab, or over committing to the jab, use it as a range finder and as an occupier of for, for, for Ruiz's pick. So he'll throw out two jabs, Ruiz will look to pick them, but it, they'll only be decoys, they'll only be occupying Ruiz, and then look for him to throw the right hand behind it, or double jab, and then turn it into a hook. Which Joshua did have success with a long left hook um, in the first fight. Um, so we'll see. That's just that's. What I just I just think that's the way he's going to fight. He's going to box and move, box and move. Try to nullify Ruiz early in the fight and take him into the late rounds. Hopefully, and he, I think he'll try and get a stoppage late in the fight. It's interesting that you mentioned that about the style of Andy Ruiz really harming Anthony Joshua the last time out because I think it completely fits into your what you also said there in that answer about the fact that Anthony Joshua is still going through an education of boxing late in his career that somebody almost needs to sit him down and give him the stencil this is exactly how Andy Ruiz is going to approach this fight and this is how you need to box against it that he still needs to be thought and told exactly what to do almost especially when it comes to style in the boxing ring he's clearly got the physique he's clearly got the technique it's just the style almost when he gets in there that that's required and if his coach is giving a very clear message like you've given off the ball viewers just there about how to achieve a win this weekend you'd imagine that Joshua has the superior talent to be able to execute that uh, have I oversimplified the chances in, no, in the fight? Look, that's that's all well and good, but then you have to think about what Rui is going to do. And what mm. Rui did in the first fight, which was very effective, he kept jabbing Joshua to the body and to the chest. Yeah, and that slowly broke Joshua down because there was there was only just only a few really heavy headshots landed before before the eventual um, breaking down of Joshua. Like, but he was constantly jabbing to the body, jabbing hard to the body and to the chest. And I don't think Joshua was prepared for that. Talk about conditioning. It's a different condition. And there's one condition, like, we talk about conditioning, and people say, how is Joshua not in condition? Look at the shape he's in, look at the physique he's in. There's fitness and there's conditioning, but then there's also boxing fitness. And that's completely different. It's completely different. Like, you can do all the weights, all the running, all the bag work you want, but then you, when you get in there and spar, you're still as tired as you are. And, like, it's like, you know, you still have to build up that sparring condition. Like, look at McGregor and Mayweather. You can't even find a better specimen of a man than than Conor McGregor. Look at the shape he's in. Look how, like, the condition he's in. But he's not boxing condition. So uh, what happened to him? He started off well, but then he got tired. And Mayweather knew that. Mayweather just took his time, walked him down, made Conor McGregor work, and then he got tired and gassed out. Um, so there's a different conditioning for boxing. So that would, that's why I was saying also that Joshua taking away his strength and conditioning and put more emphasis on boxing is a good thing for him. Um, 
But all, like both men know that, I think Joshua knows if he can box a discipline fight, keep his emotions emotions in check, that he can win. Mm. But and obviously Andy Ruiz knows he can win. So it's it's it is it's just a need. Like I can't call it. I can't. It's it's one of those fights where you just can't call it. You can see either man winning. Right, he's, um, he's two to one, Andy. Uh, and Andy Ruiz this time. We're, like just looking at it, he's still uh, a fairly heavy outsider. But still, when you look at the punditry and you look at the experts, nobody's giving, nobody's making him a two to one outsider uh, on when it, when it comes to the predictions. And it's like, like I, I look at that. I just even think about Joshua. Like the first fight, it was his behavior was bizarre in a lot of ways, and it was like he was having an out of body experience. Right. Because you remember. Even before the first bell, there was a lot of waiting in the ring, but he was just standing there and he's kind of biting on his gum shield, like poking it out of his mouth. He had his hands lent on the ropes. He wasn't warming up. He wasn't like bouncing around or look focused at all. He was like looking around the ring. And then obviously he got dropped. And twice, two previous rounds after that, he asked his coach, what did I get hit with? What was the punch? And what should I do? What's he going to like? He was very vocal in the corner. Um, like... I think you're going to see a lot more focus at Anthony Joshua in this fight. He already looks more focused. Um, but I, 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 I'm just tossing it in my own head, and I just, I still can't call it. I still can't see a win. I just don't know who's going to win this fight, and that's what makes it so intriguing and interesting. And um, like you can easily see Ruiz going out there and breaking him down again, yeah. walking him down, taking his shots, jabbing to the body, jabbing hard, going hard to the body with the right hand, and picking his moment. Because the, 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 the first fight, it wasn't like a one punch. It wasn't a lucky punch. It was a punch that started. But after that, there was a systematic breakdown. And Joshua had moments where he could have recovered, had moments where he could have maybe knocked Ruiz out, and, and had, just still had some success after the first knockdown. But Ruiz just took his time and was patient and broke him down, mm. methodically broke him down. So you could easily see that happening again.